Arr, it be a pirate's life for lunch. Also, seeing what she could take from the Red Ribbon Army might be fun too. What's up everybody, Stebdez here, and welcome to another edition of Dragon Ball Days. I almost did the, I almost did that, Dragon Ball. This one's been on my mind for quite a while, as it shows a character that we get barely any screen time with. With what was going on with Earth, we got to see Launch in some quick scenes, just to show basically what every other human on the planet was going through. With Cell coming, with Boo coming, all of that kind of reflected in this one character that's supposed to represent humanity as a whole. What would have been better is if Launch was with Chi-Chi and Bulma and Deborah and Videl, you know, kind of catching up with the ladies in that one filler scene when Deborah was accepted. Unfortunately, we didn't get that character development. Those people that saw Launch during Dragon Ball and thought she was a pretty good character, eh, she ended up falling into the woman role. Again, thanks Toriyama. And so, let's add a bit of development to this character, as if it hasn't already been added on the internet before. <laughs> this is What If Launch Trained With Roshi. In the last part, Launch had trained with Roshi. That's obvious. And actually took part in the World Martial Arts Tournament with Goku and Krillin. And Yamcha, but Yamcha didn't last long. While her hair was blonde, she was way more for fighting, and she actually took Bacterian's place in the World Martial Arts Tournament, pitting her up against Krillin in the first round. Unfortunately for Krillin, your vote said that she won. However, I got to do something with that. Krillin's bullies came back to see Krillin, cheered him on, and when he lost, he ended up being worthless, allowing his friends to back him up. And so while Goku is off fighting the Red Ribbon Army and gathering Dragon Balls, we don't see Launch again until he goes to Kame House, in which Launch was actually training with Krillin whenever she was blonde. Whenever she was blue-haired, though, okay, she might do a bit of light stretching, maybe some yoga, something calm to keep her physical fitness up. She understands how important this fighting thing is to blonde Launch, so being the kind carrying blue Launch, she wouldn't want to make her other side feel bad about it, as long as she doesn't have to sweat too much. Fortunately for the parties involved, Blonde Launch overhears Roshi talk about the pirate's treasure, and you know what's going through her mind. Everything would go just about the same with General Blue's unit following the kids into the pirate cavern, and all of them would actually make it all the same when it comes down to the pirate bot. However, there is something else that changes here. Launch is experienced in guns. Bulma's not the one that gets on that cannon. It's Launch, and she's telling Krillin how to aim things so that she can fire correctly. It's not a case of the cannon hitting the wall behind the bot. It's a case of the cannon getting a direct hit, causing some good damage onto that thing. I'd still have Bulma drive the truck, but as the truck is plowing into the robot, Launch does pull out her gun, because think about it, it's a tank of gasoline, and if not, that truck has got to be explosive. However, she sneezes and drops the handgun, causing Krillin to run in quick, grab the gun, and pull the trigger a couple times. He's, he's seen Launch use a gun. This makes the truck explode in the robot's face, causing the robot to die. Causing the robot to explode, because it's a robot. Robots don't have life until the android saga. This time, however, with the robot being dealt early, that split decision actually is more of a split up decision. Goku and Launch decide to take the left just in case the cavern is trying to trick everyone, and Bulma and Krillin goes right. Therefore, General Blue's little trick doesn't happen here. Nope. Goku and Launch run as fast as they can in order to properly get to where they're going, and uh, then they end up with an octopus that giant octopus thing happens all the same, and Blue Launch just kind of faints, cause, you know, big scary thing. Leaving Goku to Kamehameha and get some calamari. General Blue has to make a decision here, left or right? Well, he does know about the dragon radar, and he does know that one of them is more of a fighter, considering how she handled the cannon. He was there watching that. So, logic would dictate 
he would go right. He would still follow Bulma and Krillin and everything would happen just about the same as Dragon Ball there. When Goku and Launch arrive on the scene, that is when, you know, Krillin's already been beaten to a pulp, General Blue wants to kill him, and Goku saves his friend. During the fight, Blue Launch would have her nose tickled by Bulma as soon as she realizes that Goku fell for the eye stare thing. After one good punt of the kid, General Blue gets a kick across the face. Hey Ugly, why don't you pick on someone your own size? Ugly, you insolent woman, I am the epitome of beauty. You look like an overblown airhead to me, now put him up. You? Ha, but you're just a girl. Launch starts getting fumed at that little remark, and yeah, lays the smack down on the already somewhat weakened General Blue. Also, the eye trick does not work here, again, because she was around for that. And unlike Goku, after Bulma says something, she's not stupid enough to look in his eyes. He did twice. This is our hero. As Launch is holding off General Blue, Krillin and Goku ask about where the Dragon Ball is. Krillin volunteers to go get the Dragon Ball as Goku tries to get things sorted. As the cave really starts rumbling and Krillin's able to get, you know, out with the Dragon Ball, they end up looking back at the treasure, hating the fact that they're leaving it, but Blonde Launch is here. She brought a capsule. That means Blonde Launch is gonna be rich in the future. They eventually make it out, and as they get to the shoreline where General Blue's base was, Bulma shows that she was able to smuggle that really nice diamond, and Launch holds them at gunpoint. She's going to take everything and leave. But luckily for them, some greens of sand blow in the wind, and she sneezes, dropping the gun, and everybody goes to Kame House, celebrating their victory, and celebrating the fact that they have more than just a nice diamond. What's up, everybody? Oh, that is horrible lighting for my face. Let me just... There, there we go. So, uh, the reason why I'm interrupting in the middle of this video is to tell you all to check out that link in the description. That is going to lead you to a poll to tell me what the hell to do with Goten Part 6 because I'm itching to continue that as well as every other vote. I'm also going to interrupt uh, in the middle of some of the other videos because I think that would make my videos a bit more... A, a bit more natural to record so you don't lose a whole lot of quality, but I will be putting myself in these sort of parts with my phone, obviously, and telling you all to vote on previous episodes, previous parts of What Ifs that required a vote. Thanks to YouTube being YouTube, all of those votes are no longer there. Your voice was effectively not heard. So I want to be sure that you, the fans, get your voice heard on this channel. If I ask you what you should be doing, what with the voting, then you need to be doing the voting. So check out the link in the description of this video. There will be a vote there for Goten Part 6. And in the next video, which will be one that I didn't ask for a vote for, I will also ask for a vote for that one so that I can get my series back going because this whole thing has made one big roadblock and again thank you all for the support thank you for everything you've been doing for the channel almost 1000 road to 1000 let's do it and um yeah back to the video but wait wouldn't everybody get tied up by general blue then because the only reason launch didn't is because she sneezed and left well I'd still have her sneeze at Kame House. She would still want to get away with the capsule that has the treasure chest, they can have the friggin' diamond. And on their way, she remembers what Roshi had told her. She has to uphold the turtle style, the whole war and peace thing. So Launch would come back, but not as Blue Launch. She would come back with a good 30 seconds left on the timer and ask why everybody's all tied up. They quickly tell Blonde Launch that that thing is a bomb, it's not just a timer, and she ends up grabbing it with way more strength than the original, and yucks it out to sea just before it blows up. They then explain that General Blue had left with not only the Dragon Balls, but the Dragon Radar as well. And considering how 
the Dragon Balls are and knowing how rich the Red Ribbon Army must be, that does entice Launch in a way. Plus, Launch has a little habit of killing witnesses. Yeah, with General Blue looking up who Launch is, that might not be good for her wanted streak. She would catch up to General Blue in the plane, but she would lose him because the plane General Blue was flying, well, it has more boosters. And just by her whizzing by on the flying Nimbus would be Goku, who eventually was able to get out of the ropes. She would arrive in Penguin Village just as General Blue has Aureli at knife point and Goku is paralyzed by Blue's stare. A bullet would then hit the knife that General Blue is holding and disarm him, just as Launch makes the scene parking sideways. In fury, General Blue then squares off against Blonde Launch, and the battle goes very evenly, with Blonde Launch knowing not to look in his eyes. As General Blue and Blonde Launch go toe to toe, it's not until Blonde Launch is weaker that Blue is able to get the glare on her. However, thanks to some of her hair, she sneezes. And since she's sneezing into kind of another person, I want to say it's another person, she ends up breaking the control Blue has on her body. Just as he approaches with a cut tree, you know, kind of like what he was doing with Goku in the original, Blue Launch shoves him, causing the tree to fall on him. Blue Launch then just kind of sits there, like, she just did that? She's that strong? But, I mean, Clearly he was a bad guy, and he, I mean, he was gonna do something bad, and that, that felt good. Making a bad man kinda get his just desserts, that was refreshing in a way. Something that she'd never really experienced before. As General Blue gets up, he is definitely weary from all of that, and just as he goes in for a sloppy punch, Blue Launch kinda ducks and holds her fist out, causing Blue to knock himself out. Goku arrives with the Dragon Radar in hand and actually getting the Dragon Balls back as General Blue is defeated and locked up. The main difference in this timeline is whenever he would get back to base, because let's face it, that jail cell would not hold him, he would actually be killed by Tao Pai Pai. Goku would offer Launch to go with him, but Blue Launch would refuse, preferring to go to Kame House. She does get up on the flying Nimbus being the blue-haired launch, but there is something that changes here. She sneezes on the way to Kame House. She, however, stays on the Nimbus. Sure, she had ulterior motives, but going back and getting the bomb away from everyone shows that blonde launch has a bit purer of a heart, pure enough to ride the Nimbus. She asks Goku where they're going, and Goku says, well, we're going to Kame House. And that's when she tells him, no, we're not. I want to fight the Red Ribbon Army. I want to get whatever they have. They must have some fun toys. And so with a new purity in her heart, Goku and Launch take off towards Korin Tower to meet Upa and Bora. And that is where we're leaving things for right now. So what do you all think? Do you think Blue Launch might be a bit more helpful in the future? What about Blonde Launch? Is she turning over a new leaf finally? How do you think the fight with Tao Pai Pai will go? Hey mooks, go ahead and leave your comment below, why don't you? For more what ifs in the realm of video gaming and Dragon Ball alike, such as if Nam had actually defeated Tian Shinhan, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. If you would like to donate to the channel, hit the Patreon link in the description below. You don't have to, but I do appreciate it. There are a lot of fun tiers on there, including a voice message for whoever you want in one of the tiers. You also get creative control if I need help writing some of these. Like the video if you enjoyed it, and as always, I'll see you in the next one! Ciao!